Hi, this is Dr. Dave, and in this video I'm going to show you how to get started on creating a contingency table for your tax project. Before you start this assignment, make sure you've gone back into your projects module and you've read the project letter because that project letter includes the data that you're going to be using in this project and you need to go ahead and look at that. What you're going to end up creating is something that looks very similar to this. This is a Google Sheet and each member of your team is going to create a separate sheet inside of a file which I'm going to show you in a moment. What this has is it has the year that you're going to be working with. I'm working with 2000 but each one of you are going to be working with a different year. Along the top it has headings R, R with an apostrophe and total and R in this case is the event that a tax return uh, has a refund. Over here, this is the complement of that. That's what that apostrophe means. So this is a tax re return does not have a refund. Over here we have E, and that represents the tax return was examined. And down here, E complement, or the complement of E, means the tax return was not examined. So the numbers that I have in here are things that we can take from our project letter data or we can calculate from that. And then down below here I have some possible probabilities. You're not going to be finding these particular ones, but some ones very similar to that that are outlined in the project letter. So when I look at this number right here, this 1248871100, so 124,887,100, that's the total taxable tax returns that were filed in the US in 2000 that were individual returns. If I look over here, the 617,765, that's the total number of taxable returns that were examined. If I look at the number down here, that was the total number of taxable returns that had a refund. So we want to get this data in here. We'll have to calculate out a few things, and then after that, we can go ahead and calculate some probabilities. So let's get started on this. So when you log into your shared Google Drive, you're going to have uh, something that kind of looks like this, but not exactly. Because I've gone ahead and shared a folder with you. However, when you first go into Google Drive, you're not going to see that folder. What you're going to have to do is go over to Shared With Me, and then inside of there, you're going to find your project folder. Your project folder is named something like Math 142 Team whatever team you are. I've sent you an email with what team number you're on. So once you're in your Shared With Me, if you right click on that and say Add to My Drive, it'll put it inside of your My Drive. I've actually put it into another folder here, but you'll probably just have it in My Drive. So go ahead and double click on the folder. You'll see subfolders here for project one and project two. We're in project one, so we're going to double click on that. And then inside here, you should see a Google sheet, which is this green icon right here that says Math 142, project one, team, whatever team you are. There may be some other files here, but this is the one that we want right now. So this is a spreadsheet and it is just a very large table that we can do calculations in. Each one of you are going to be working in this folder under a different tab within it. So if I double click and I go into that folder, you'll see along the bottom here are our tabs. And right now, since I'm the first one in here, there are just two tabs here. One has team members and another one is a team log. You'll see your name listed inside of team members your email, and then also the tax year that I'm going to want you to work with on this project. Each person on your team is going to work with a different tax year, but I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate it with that 2000 tax year. There's another tab here that says Team Log, and this is a place where after every time you work inside of the shared folder, you want to let the other people on your team know exactly what you've done. So put your name, the date, and then just something about what you did here. Sometimes you may be trying to help other members of your team out and you may be looking at their stuff. You want to make sure that you indicate that here. So once I've gone ahead and identified what tax year, and for me, 
I should have 2000 there because that's the one I'm showing you. We're going to go ahead and create a new tab which is where you're going to do this technology assignment. So to create a new sheet inside of here I'm going to go to the plus sign here and click on that. It created this sheet too. I'd like to see it a little bit farther over here so if I click on it and drag it it'll move it over and now I want to make sure that I know exactly what's going in this sheet and who's doing it. So I'm going to double click and that allows me to rename it. I'm going to call it T1 for Tech1 underscore my last name. Of course you'd put your last name in here but what this tells me and the other people on your team is this is technology assignment one and this is the person who's doing it. So now what I have to do is up in here I have to put that table up here. That table is called a contingency table. So the year that I'm doing is 2000 and remember we have two events that we're interested in. We're interested in that the tax return had a refund and the tax return was examined and then of course the complements of those. So I'm going to go ahead and put R here for the refund, R complement using apostrophe, and then over here total numbers. Down below I'm going to put E for the tax return was examined. Down here will be the complement of E and then the total here. So I can work just from here, but I'd like to make this look a little bit nicer. I'm going to edit some of these things. One of the things I'd like to edit is I'd like to have these things all centered, uh, maybe bold, and I want maybe have the rows a little bit bigger. So if I want to go ahead and put some things in bold here, I could go ahead and click on it and then go up to here where you see the B, hit bold, and that makes it bold. Now I don't want to do that for every one of these individually so I can click on one while I'm holding my mouse button down move over and drag it. When it highlights it here in blue hit the B now it does all of those. I can do the same thing down here by clicking on the E cell and then drag it down. Bold face it. So that makes those stand out a little bit more. Now. I'd like to see all of these centered here so I can go ahead and click on this one and it'll select that entire row and then if I go right to here it gives me my horizontal alignment I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to center that. I can do the same thing here with a column I can select the entire column come up here click on that there and now it tells me it's centered all of those things. You'll remember that the one that I showed you earlier had a little bit bigger rows here. If I go right up to the edge here where I see that double arrow, I can click and drag that down. Same thing here. Same thing here. Just gives me a little bit more room to work in. I can also change the size of the columns by grabbing onto the column border right here. When I went ahead and did that, you see how these cells are all aligned so that the numbers are at the very bottom? If I go ahead and select the first row and then come up to here, I can change my alignment so it's in the middle. And I can do that for the column also. Now things are starting to look pretty nice here. My next step here is to start filling in the entries down here. And all I'm going to have to do is I'm just going to go ahead and click on the cell and then fill in the entry. So if you look at the table in the project letter for your year, you're going to see some numbers there. And at the very top, it tells you what those numbers mean. So one of the numbers in there is the total number of tax returns that were filed. So that would be this total right here. And that number for me is 124 million. 887,100. Hit enter and it's going to go ahead and put that in here for me. Now I want to look at the rest of the numbers in the table and fill in what I can fill. 
initially, you're not going to be able to fill in every single one of these. However, in the next technology assignment, I'll show you how to calculate the ones that are missing. You should be able to fill in four entries in this table using the data in the project letter. All I want to see from this particular tech assignment is for you to fill in the things that make sense here. One of the things you can do to let you know that it's something that you took from the project letter is maybe to put these in a different color. So if I click on the cell that has that and I go up to right here, there's font. I could change the font on that. I'm more interested in the color and the changing the color is right over here. I'm going to put it in red. So what the way I'm thinking is if it's something that was data, I'm going to put it in red. And if it's something that I calculate, for instance, in the next technology assignment, I'm going to put it in black, which is the thing there. Now I did notice that it did not take the cell alignment here. So let me go ahead and go back here and then go ahead and align it centered. So now that looks pretty nice. So what I'm going to expect from you for this tech assignment is that each one of you is going to have a tab down here. It's going to be called T1 underscore your last name. You're going to have a table up here. You're going to have the year which you're doing right here. It's not going to be the same as this one. It's going to be the one that you're assigned. You're going to have your different events up here, refund, complement of refund, and then total numbers examined, complement of examined, and then total numbers. Fill in this table with some of the data that is in your project letter. You should be able to fill in four numbers by looking at what is it that the numbers represent. That'll tell you where to put it here. And that's kind of the challenge here is making sure you put the numbers in the correct place. Once you're done, you don't have to do anything because I have access to your shared folder. When the due date comes on Thursday, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at what you've done and then I'll leave you some feedback in your my drive. So if you go back to project one here, you'll see another document here. It's going to be a Google Doc, so it'll have a blue icon and inside there I'm going to give you some feedback. So make sure you get started on this early so if you do have some trouble, you have a chance to ask me questions and I can get that information back to you before the deadline.